Assalamualaikum my dear students. Today the topic is the second part of your previous lecture that is the gerund. Because gerund is also a member of a noun, please remember that it is not a verb actually. It is a member of a noun. How? Let's see the definition of the gerund. A gerund is a noun made from a verb by adding ing to it. Let's see some of the ingredients of making a gerund. It is actually a verb. Few of the people think that it is actually a verb, but it's not a verb. It is made of a verb. How? When we add ing to it to make it a noun, then it gives us a noun. How? Let's see. If read is a verb and I have added ing to it, so it will become a reading. So that's the noun. It's not your verb. It's not anything else. It's a verb. It's actually a verb but I have added ing to it to make it a noun and it's our gerund. So how a gerund works? Let's see. I have made a gerund here that is reading. I can use the reading as a subject, as an object. I can use a gerund as object of a preposition. It's a three stages. But now it's, it can be used as the four point, that is the complement of the verb. We have discussed the complement before and we all know that it is actually someone's quality, someone's more exaggerating word thing or a complement, complement of a verb. So it means that we have categorized a gerund by using three simple steps. First, verb plus ing is equals to a noun that I have given you an example already that is reading. Now we can use this gerund in four different ways like as an object, object of a preposition, complement of a verb or as a subject. We have different points here. Now let's see that how we can use it more properly. Okay, so let's see a few of the examples to make more clear. Let's see some gerunds here. You can see in this picture that what the girls are doing. They are playing, obviously. So the girls are playing. It is what? It is a regular sentence. But it's a, playing is actually a verb here. That is not our gerund. No doubt that we have added ing to it. But it's not a gerund. So what will be the gerund for us? Yes, the second sentence. That is playing is good for health. So I have an underlined the playing here. Because playing is the subject here. And subject is our gerund actually. This is a good example to understand. So how can we use different words in different ways? For example, in the second picture, you can see that they like singing. Singing is what? It is an object and I have used gerund as an object here. This next example is what I like is singing. What I like is singing. Here the singing ing suffix says that this is a complement of verb. The next is I am fond of cooking which means that of cooking is object of what? Preposition. Yes, I have used in four different ways and you can see on page number 105 of your book on which a gerund may be used as reading is a good habit. Here you can see that reading is a good habit. Reading is what? Is is here verb and reading is our 
Yes, it is our gerund. The next is object of a transitive verb. I like reading stories. I like reading stories. Yes, reading a here ing tells us that this is a gerund here. And I have used this as object of a transitive verb. The next is object of a preposition. Let's see how the book has used this. He is fond of reading. It is just like I told you before. I am fond of cooking. Same is the case with this. He is fond of reading. So it means that reading here is a gerund and I have used it as object of a preposition. The last is the number fourth sentence that is the complement of a verb. What I like is reading. What I like is reading. Here like is your verb but reading says that I have added a suffix here that is ing and it's or gerund. Exactly. Now you are able to understand and identify a few of the gerunds from next page. That is page number 105 again. And the next question is in the following sentences the words in italics are gerunds. We all know that all the words that has been given in italics are our gerunds. Like Rashid likes riding. Riding is your gerund. Dancing, learning, reading, all these italic words are our gerund. On page number 106, you can easily see that there are two columns given to you. One for the gerund and the other is for the infinitives. The gerund that tells us that they have added a suffix that is ing and infinitives tells us that they have added preposition to and with the verb. So let's see that how they have given few of the good examples to you. Remember my dear students that gerunds has been used for vivid, real and ongoing in the present. Please remember don't Think that uh, it is your past, it is your present participle, but it gives you some vivid, some very important and real situations to you. That becomes your noun after adding suffix ing to it. And infinitives are your hypothetical, your unfulfilled or your future oriented words that uh, must be or that will be or that you wish to happen something. For example, I have selected few of the words from these two columns like enjoy. I want to add ing to it. That makes it enjoying. It's your gerund. The next word is face. When I add ing to it, it will become facing. The next word is Put off. Put off will become putting off. It is also your gerund. The next is feel like. Feeling like. It becomes your gerund. Now you can make different sentences of them by categorizing, by keeping in mind few of the important points that this must be ongoing uh, situations. The next is your infinitives. For example, dare, to dare. Mm, to dare. To, I want to dare you. You want to dare me. I have dared you. But remember that must be a difference of two and your verbs. The next is to love. Love will become to love. I love to eat burgers. The next is try, to try. He advised me to try all the time. Wish, to wish. Yes, now make as many sentences as you can. So let's move to exercise number one because now you can easily observe and identify few of the infinitives and the gerunds easily. Let's see page number 106. Fill in the blanks with the correct form of the verbs. It's very interesting because the form of the verb has been given to you already in the bracket section. And you just need to differ between the infinitives and the gerunds. 
like number one, you can't help like him. Is it a right sentence? No. I would like to change it with the suffix by adding suffix ing to it. It will become you can't help liking him. This is your gerund. The next is number two. We decided to stay at home. We decided staying at home. This is also your gerund. Number three. We expect here from any soon. We expect to hear from any soon. This is your infinitive. I have added two in it and I have used the simple first form. The next number fourth sentence is do you fancy go out tonight? This is ongoing situation. So what you are going to do? You will add ing to it by making it a gerund and yes it will become do you fancy going out tonight? Number five sentence. I don't feel like cooking. Again it's ongoing and vivid situation. Yes move to the next exercise that is exercise number two on page number 107. C. Underline the gerunds in each sentence. I hope that this is not a difficult task for you because you just need to underline few of the sentences here. Let's find out ing words here. But please be careful of selecting your verb and noun because this will create a little bit problem for you. If you will select any of the ing verb here. Teaching is an incredible profession. Here teaching is a subject. So teaching is your gerund. Underline it. Number two, traveling widens our knowledge. Exactly, traveling. Number three, there is no point in waiting. Waiting here it has been used as an object. So waiting is your gerund. Number four, she began singing. Begin is your verb and singing is your gerund. Number five, let's go shopping this evening. Let's go shopping. Go is your verb and shopping is verb. No, it's your gerund. So we have done the five sentences for you. Let's move to the next page that is page number 108. As we have discussed that uh, uh, the gerund has been used in four different ways. So how can we make sentences by using it as a subject, as an object, as a complement of the subject, as a um, helping the verb, as in different ways. Let's find out these sentences on page number 108. Swimming as a direct object. Now this is a task for you, but I will do it for you first time. Swimming as a direct object. Let's make a sentence. I like swimming. This is our sentence. Number two, talking as an object of a preposition. So let's make it as an object of the preposition. How we are making the sentence. Let's see. She is expert in talking too much. This is the sentence. Number three, running as a subject. Let's use running as a subject. Running is Olympics. Running in Olympics is my dream. So this becomes our gerund. What? Running. Sleeping as a subject complement. Let's use sleeping word as subject complement. I am taking sleeping pills. Yes, I have used sleeping here as complement for the pills. Number five, helping as a direct object. We all need a helping hand. Yes, exactly. And I have used a helping as a direct object for the hand. Six, laughing as a subject. Too much laughing is not good. So this is our gerund. Number seven and eight sentence will be done by you and I hope that you are able to make different sentences now. Let's move to the next exercise, number four, that is present on page number 109. They dash like or play leapfrog. We have to find out the plan's correct word here, that what should we use here? Like or play? Yes, like to play. Like to play. This is actually our infinitive. She dash like or paint. She likes painting. We have to use the both verbs here but in different ways. Number three. He likes 
to take photos. I have used like here and photo here. So it means photo is an object but likes is your verb and take to take is the infinitive here. So it becomes he likes to take photos. Number four, they like to play basketball. Number five, children like to play tennis. Number six, he likes to watch TV. Yes, we are making, making so many infinitives here. Number seven, he likes fishing. Now I have changed the category a little bit here by adding the suffix ing to the fish and it becomes fishing. Exactly. Now make number eight sentence. She likes singing. Number nine, they like to cook food. Number ten, they like to play chess. Have you noticed that we have used s in the first form of the verb by using our that rule and law of the singular pronoun. We have followed the single pronoun here like he, she and it and we have added more and more gerunds to it. All the sentences are going in this way. So why should we waste our time? The rest of the sentences will be done by you. Let's move to the next exercise number 5 that is present on page number 110. On this page write the correct form of the verbs given in brackets. Again you have to do the correct form of the verb by using the correct infinitive or the gerund. Number 1. He loves to wear sunglasses. Number 2. Mary prefers eating melon, watermelon. Number 3. His favorite hobby is flying kite. Number 4. Hiking can be strenuous. Number 5. He can spend the evening playing the saxophone. Number 6. Tony is better than you at cycling. Number seven, my mom does most of the cooking at home. Number eight, Peter's hobby is to drive his red car. Number nine, Bano enjoys skipping rope. So my dear students, I hope that all the lectures are very well taught and you will be able to solve each and every sentence to your own. You guys are thinking that why teacher have not solved all the exercises. It is because I want you to be the perfect one and please keep on revising and doing all those rest of the sentences. The sentences that have been ticked in green color is a sign that teacher has given you an example and the rest of the sentences are your assignment to follow the text sentences and do it to your own so keep on practicing so these are all the gerunds and the infinitives i hope that you have enjoyed making gerunds and making infinitives now please this these will be done as much as you can by you yourself best of luck and allah hafiz